Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at web fonts. Now by default you just have some very basic fonts that are available to both Windows and Macintosh computers. So they're not a lot of very interesting or very exciting fonts. So we're going to look at how to embed fonts. Now first of all uh, we're going to be working with this particular page. So in the code for it, I have the body selector already set up to use the font family of sans serif. So it has a, a sans serif type font that is the default for your browser. Now you might be tempted to say, well, I have this really cool font on my computer and I'm going to try that one. So if I put in, I have Lucida handwriting on my computer. So if I set the font family for that and we look at it in the preview, you can see that it displays the font and it's doing it globally throughout the entire body so everything has it. So first of all, when you're going to choose a font, be careful and make sure that it is going to be readable on your page. You can see that this script font really makes reading this text very difficult. It might be okay for headings and larger text and even maybe for the navigation, but for body text it really is too much. The other thing that you have to be careful of is making sure that the font that you select in here is one that's available on the user's computer, because if it's not, then it's going to just show a default font. So for example, a common font that a lot of people have on Windows computers are Joker Man. So it might look great on your computer, but then somebody else who doesn't have Joker Man installed, when they preview it on their, or they view it on their browser, it's going to show a default serif font. So for years, we've been battling with just some very basic fonts that are available on both Windows and Mac computers. And if you wanted anything more than that, then basically you had to make a graphic and turn your text into a graphic. So similar to her logo here. So this text is a graphic and that way you were able to make sure that the font displayed properly. Well now we have some new things called embedding fonts and actually it's not really that new. It's been around for a while but the availability of fonts hasn't been there. In order to be able to embed them, you had to have licenses for them or had to purchase them. And now there are more options available for being able to embed fonts. So now if we had a special font that we wanted to use on our web page, we can make sure that it will display on the user's browser without requiring them to install it. So before we jump right into that, let's look at some basic information that you need to be aware of about working with embedded fonts. CSS3 introduced at sign font base, which allows us to embed fonts within our web pages. Now there's a couple of things that you need to know. First of all, Internet Explorer only supports the font type of embedded open type, or the EOT. And then Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and Opera support true type fonts and open type fonts. So that means that we need to include multiple fonts in order for them to display properly on different browsers. But one problem is if you include them all, Internet Explorer tries to load them even if it can't support them. So when we work with font face, I'm gonna show you a little trick that is available so that we can trick Internet Explorer into thinking that it's gone as far as it can go to load different fonts. Now let's take a look at where you can go to get fonts. One source that I use is fontsquirrel.com. We have 100% free, even for commercial use. They have a wide variety of fonts and you can scroll through and look at all the different types you can filter them, you can search for different styles. I'm going to just choose quicksand on this front page because this is similar to the type that she has on her logo. 
and I'm going to be using this for the heading tags. So when you find a font that you're interested in, you can go to view it, and it shows you the different characters. I even like to be able to test drive it, so if I wanted to see what a word or a phrase might look like using that type, I can change the size if I wanted to see what it's going to look like on a smaller scale. So we can test it out. And then if it has other options, I can see what it looks like with the other options. So if you find something that you're interested in and you want to use this to embed fonts on your web pages, you want to come up and click on the at sign font face kit. So I'm going to click that and it gives me some options. I want to choose English and you want to choose all the font formats. You might as well have them all. And then I'm going to click to download the font face kit. Next I'm going to go to my downloads folder and open up that kit. So this is the downloaded font face kit that I have and it has all of the different font styles and types in here. But it gives me an HTML demo file and it also gives me a style sheet CSS file. And what's nice about them is they give you example code of how to embed and work with this on a web page. So first of all, let me take this demo HTML. I'm going to open it up into my browser so we can see what that looks like. It's nice because we have some heading styles, shows all the different formats of the font in body text. Next, I'm going to open up the, the demo HTML and the style sheet into an editor and we can start to look at the code that shows how this was created. So the demo HTML file has a style embedded style sheet in the head section that is formatting the different divisions and classes in here. So we have class equals font face, class equals style one, style two. So you can see here style one and two are all using different styles of the font that I downloaded. Now in addition to that, it also said, well, if it can't find this font for some reason, then use Arial, and if it can't find Arial, then use a sans serif font. And this is also linking to a style sheet CSS file. So let's look at the style sheet CSS. We have the at sign font face rule, and we are specifying the font family, and then we say the source of where it is, so if we put this into another folder someplace and it's not directly in the same location as the demo HTML file or the file that you're using, you want to make sure that you put in the path there. But you can see here that this is using the OET font, which is what is needed for Internet Explorer. And when it gets to this next one, you can see where we have pound sign IE fix. This is tricking Internet Explorer into thinking this is as far as it goes and not to go any further. So it doesn't grab any of these other file types. So this is where it stops Internet Explorer from continuing on. And you can see they all, each of these have it. So this is for the light typeface and this is for oblique. So this is a different font face style for each of the different types that was downloaded. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one for quicksand light and I'm going to copy this and put this into my style sheet from my website. So I'm going to go to my styles and I think I'm just going to put this right in here after the body tag. And I did move my fonts into a separate folder called quicksand. So I'm going to put in that folder location in front of each one of these lines. So this is just saying and defining, hey, this is the font face. When we want to use font family quicksand light, this is where to go to find those fonts. So those fonts would have to be uploaded to your web server along with your HTML page and style sheets. So now let's say I wanted my heading one tag to use quicksand light. So I'm just going to copy this line right here, font family, and I'm going to put, include that in here for my heading one. So now let me go to my web page and preview it. 
end. We have success. So it found the font style and put that in here. So now if I wanted this to be used for heading two as well, I can come back to my style sheet and I'll paste this in for my heading two style and then come back to my web page and it already picked it up. So Font Squirrel is a great resource to get a lot of different types of interesting fonts that are free that you can include and upload to your server and they give you the demo and the CSS files so that you have a, a good example to work from in order to add these. Now one thing to be concerned about is that it can slow down the loading of your web page because in addition to your page having to load any images and any text, your CSS files, if you have audio or video files that are also coming in here, it has to load that and it also has to load the fonts as well. So there can be a performance hit. So just be careful of how many you include on your page. Also from a design standpoint, you don't want to include 20 different fonts on a page. Two or three is usually the max that a designer will use. Otherwise, it starts to look like a ransom note. So have fun and enjoy working with embedded fonts.